Welcome to this session on evaluation metrics. The goal here is to get some more tools, to learn about some more tools that help us to evaluate our models to make sure that they generalize. First, let's reconsider the kinds of errors that can happen. We already touched upon these, but just to make this clear and again, so here we have two kinds of errors that we consider in a binary classification problem. We could have the false positive, the so-called type 1 error. And in the example of the cancer screening that we already considered in the classification lecture, this would be that we predict that a healthy patient has cancer. And of course, this has consequences. This could mean additional testing. It could mean additional cost. And it can also cause a lot of mental distress with the person. But there's also the false negatives, the type 2 error. And here in the example, it would mean that we predict that a patient with cancer has no cancer, that we would basically tell the person that he or she is healthy. And this has consequences that are far more serious, right? This could lead to serious health issues because cancer would be untreated and it could possibly result in a preventable death. So it's very important to consider the errors that can happen um, and what they mean for the individual and the problem that you're trying to uh, model. Here, again, a visualization from Wikipedia on the false positives and true positives. On the left, we have all the people that have cancer. It's uh, the circles that are filled. And on the right, we have all the circles that have no cancer. So we have the false negatives. These are cancer cases that go undetected. We have the true negative. These are cases where no cancer, where the person doesn't have cancer and we don't predict cancer. And then we have the true positives. That's where we make the right prediction. And the false positives is where we make the wrong prediction. So maybe pause the video and think about this. Think about two or three other examples, let's say the spam example, and how and what the errors would be and what the consequences of the errors would be. Here's another more funny uh, example that makes these errors a bit more obvious. So the false positives would, for instance, be telling a man who can't be pregnant that he's pregnant. False negatives could be to tell a person that's pregnant that she's not pregnant. It's just important terminology that you really need to get a feel, you need to use a bit until you can actually grasp it. But I kind of like these examples because they're funny and they make it more obvious. Here again is a confusion matrix based on this terminology. So we have our true negatives, we have the true positives, and then the false positives and false negatives. And especially if you have multi-class uh, classification problems, looking at the so-called confusion metrics is very important, very useful, and uh, I highly recommend you to look at this because you can kind of understand what is mistaken with what. And I think we'll have an example on that in a minute. First, yeah, consider again the confusion matrix. We have the true negatives, the true positives, false positives, and false negatives. And here's the example. Here we have a system that can predict the genre of music. And you can see there's a lot of true positives, right? The system is working and working well in a variety of ways. But what this confusion matrix also helps you uh, to understand is which things are mistaken for which. And for instance, we see that disco and hip hop are quite often confused. And also uh, there's uh, some ambiguity between hip hop and jazz. Uh, so it's really important to see which of the classes, which of the true classes is predicted as which and where your system makes errors. Because sometimes that can lead to changing your modeling assumptions. Maybe here in this particular case, you would combine different genres into one, maybe metal and rock, you could combine them into one. Um, and here are the equations based on the model that I showed you. 
accuracy we already learned about, right? The idea is here to have the true positives and the true negatives over all the predictions that we make. And we want, and, and that, so basically accuracy gives us the fraction of the true positives and the true negatives over all the predictions we made. There's also precision, which is a very important scale, uh, score. And the idea here is to consider the true positives over the true positives and the false positives. That's basically telling us of how correct the things that we predict are. So the things in the circle um, on the right, that's all the predictions we make. So precision is looking at what we predicted and how correct it was. We look at the true positives and the false positives and then take that and consider the fraction um, that true positives make to that. So that's really of our prediction how many things are correct. Recall is the true positives over the true positives and the false negatives. That's how many of the things we could have predicted were actually predicted. That's a bit more related to the coverage, right? The precision is how many of our predictions are correct. Recall is how many correct predictions did we get out of the ones that we could have gotten. And this is often better and more informative than just the accuracy. Because with accuracy, we have this funny problem if we have very, very few examples for one, either for the true positives or for the true negatives, and the system is randomly guessing one class, then we can have quite high accuracy, even though our model doesn't actually perform any better than chance. So if we look at precision and recall, we're much, much better at finding these situations where the model doesn't learn anything. You can combine precision and recall into one metric. That's the so-called F1 metric. So here we take the harmonic mean between precision and recall. And that I would highly recommend you to use instead of accuracy in the models and the reports that you're going to file for this lecture. Another thing that's worth considering is the precision recall curve per class. This is especially important for multi-class um, classification because it gives you a feeling of which of the different classes have problems where. Where is precision a problem and where is recall a problem? Where do we have problems with the coverage and where do we have problems with how many of the predictions we make are correct? Another important metric that you might find in the literature is the so-called receiver operating characteristic curve, the ROC curve. And here we have the recall, the true positive rate, and the FPR, that's the false positive rate. So one is the rate of the true positives that we make, and the other one is the rate of the false positive that we make. And here's another example, which is very nice from Wikipedia, where we look at the receiver operating characteristic, where we learn about the space and what it means. So the red dotted line is random guesses. That's a system that hasn't learned anything. Um, on the top left would be a system that has perfect classification. And A, B, and C are different points that have different advantages and disadvantages. Here's an example how the receiver operator characteristic curve looks in practice. This again was an example for the detection of the genre of music and here we compare how well we can detect metal as compared to the rest and you can see the predictions are quite good. Another important metric is the mean average precision and that's related to recall but is a recall in which the order does matter. And an example that's commonly used for this is you typing something into Google and it's showing you 10 results. What you want in this particular case is that they're all relevant, but it would still be better that the better ones are higher up. So this is not an all or nothing, not just precision or recall, 
but it's taking two things into account, right? You want all the relevant examples, but you want the good ones to be on top in the ranking. So you care about the ranking. It's one way to take the ranking into account. And that's the equation. What we're basically looking at here is the area under the precision recall curve. And then we take that over all the examples that we have. One thing that you should also be doing if you can do it with your model is to look at the feature importance. Like what influence do the different features that you give to the model have on the prediction? Now, this is revisiting the example of the flower prediction that we had way in the beginning. And you can see here which are the most important features for a particular model. And you can find there below the Python library yellow brick that will give you a very good overview on how to compute this feature importance um, and how to visualize it. And this is useful because it allows you to identify what the model is actually picking up on. What are the things that the model is taking into account? It also allows you to find things that are redundant um, and make your model a bit sleeker. Another thing that you could be looking at is the rank 2D. So rank 1D and 2D evaluate single features or pairs of features using a variety of metrics that score the features on a scale from minus 1 to 1 or from 0 to 1, which allow them to be ranked. Here's some code example um, from the credit data set. So we have a bunch of features and we now look at which ones of them correlate with each other and what covariance they have with each other. And here we have again a bunch of features, 23 different features, and we can see which ones are correlated with each other. And that allows us to see the relationship between them. Some are positively correlated, some are negatively correlated, and you can use this now for feature engineering to make your model better, to try out to remove certain features and to see which ones work and see what data you could add to your model to make it even better. You can also compute this using the Pearson correlation, which again gives you a feeling of how they are related to each other.